In this video, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, the problem that seemingly every Rise of Kingdoms player has complained about at least once, yet Lilith continues to pretend doesn't exist. And of course, I'm talking about crystal technology. We're going to talk about why this specific form of power gain in Rise of Kingdoms is especially detrimental to the game, why it's different from other forms of power gain that are already there, as well as the long term effect that it's having on the game. What's going on, guys? Cheers now before we jump into the discussion about crystal technology i gotta show you guys something cool so apparently we have a massive mystery unboxing from today's sponsor mech arena baby all right the moment of truth yo what is this dude is this gonna explode if i open it yo look at this the time is now mechs are here you have been invited to take part in the greatest event of our lifetime you have just 12 days to destroy 1 billion mechs but you're not alone. You will be joined by over 10 million other pilots worldwide to take on this challenge. Prizes will be unlocked and a donation will be made to able gamers. The fact that they're turning their game launch into a massive championship and a way to raise money for charity is incredible. So here we've got this super cool looking coin. This is, this is the mech that they sent me. This actually is super cool. Oh, look at those guns, dude. Look at those guys. Sick. What is this little scroll here? We got fully automatic weapons. We got fire. We got explosions. I mean, what else do you, what else do you want from a game? This looks like a jer no way. They got my name on the jersey. How does it look? How do I, how, do, how am I looking you guys? I am ready to destroy some mechs. Okay. We've got an art book. Okay. So we've got some like blueprints and stuff in here, man. Weapons. Now we're talking dude. Mech arena is a free quick fire competitive robot game with explosive PVP team battles, deep combat tactics, and limitless customization. In mech arena, you could play custom matches against your friends or get them in a team to take down players from around the world in live five V five and two V two matches. Just select a war robot from dozens of options equip it with the perfect weapon loadout and take on all comers in the arena then customize the looks and performance of your bots as you rise up the divisions to reach the top are you a stealthy sniper or are you a shooter that likes to get up close and personal in mech arena every map favors different mechs and tactics explore over 20 unique maps and master them all with over a dozen distinctive bots and more than 30 weapons to play with you can prepare for whatever the opposing team throws at you blind your opponent's best shooter with target jammers wreck their war robots by ramming them at speed know when and where to use the abilities of your bots if you want to win in combat make your name as the greatest shooter in the mech arena league today the world is watching huge shout out to mech arena for sponsoring this video you can download the game for free link will be in the description so what are you waiting for boys the mechs are here let's go now there are plenty of ways in this game for a whale to gain a significant advantage over the competition there's the mightiest governor commanders there's wheel of fortune commanders but there's also also VIP buffs that give you 5% extra damage. In the early game, you could make the argument that T5 units are a huge advantage that a whale can have that other players can't. And of course, let's not forget legendary equipment, but all of those things are different than crystal technology, which you see in the season of conquest KVKs. See, unlike regular technology buildings or commanders, crystal tech is a cyclical system. It is never finished and it can never be finished, but this doesn't inherently make the system bad. After all, new commanders are constantly added to the game which in itself is sort of like a cycle the problem is that you cannot max crystal technology simply by playing the game you must spend money every time you're presented with this mechanic in order to finish it which wouldn't be horrible if it were the cost of let's say a battle pass or maybe even the cost of a triple a game release somewhere in the range of 15 to 70 dollars the reality however is that it costs hundreds of dollars every single time that kvk comes around now let me ask you this what happens when a player spends hundreds of dollars and still loses kvk what happens if that becomes the trend for that player and it happens multiple times in a row well there's a few different outcomes right the first is that the spending player quits the game they've wasted potentially thousands of dollars and they can no longer pay to win they're essentially throwing their money into the garbage and that makes your player base feel stupid and not only are they wasting their money they're wasting their time too kvk is a time intensive event nobody likes when their time and their money are wasted and more players that quit equals a dead game now the second outcome is one that is very popular amongst rise of kingdoms players and one that many of you guys have commented on my videos saying that i should do and make a series about which is 
migrating to a newer kingdom so that way you can do kvk2 again kvk2 is commonly referred to as the best kvk format because it has a ton of commanders that you can use a nice variety of equipment but it doesn't have the dreaded kvk tech so you can just play with your account and not have to worry about any of the crystal stuff but this presents a new problem because new players who are supposed to be enjoying kvk2 for the very first time have way fewer equipment than these new players that have migrated into the kingdom and they don't have as many maxed commanders even if a lot of the new commanders are limited to season of conquest only older players are still going to be further along with gold key commanders and they probably have commanders like richard that they've maxed in the past that they can still get decent usage out of in kvk2 now if these new players have a terrible kvk2 experience and then they're told by the community that kvk2 is the best kvk format those players are going to end up quitting i mean nobody wants to prepare for kvk2 and just get completely stomped out by players who've been playing for two years so in a world where i have never seen a single player praise the kvk tech system why is it still in the game and is it better than the alternative because look i don't want to make this video where i'm just complaining about this and then log off I actually don't like making these negative videos and I've been sitting on this video idea for at least a week or more because I just didn't want to record it. It's just, I don't like talking negative about a game that I actually like. I'm actually passionate about rise of kingdoms, but this is a real problem that the game has been facing for far too long. So what's the solution? A lot of players are going to say, well, it's simple. Just remove KVK tech, but here's the problem with that. KVK tech is a free source of income for Lilith. They literally have a guaranteed source source of income for every single KVK where they don't have to do anything with new commanders or new equipment or any other system in the game they have to invest time and money into designing these new commanders and also testing them and making sure that they fit in the game that they don't break it in any way or that they don't implement a commander that's completely useless and people waste their money on designing new commanders and equipment takes time and effort and you know money and resources but KVK tech costs nothing it's a single system that they implemented one time and it comes around all the time and it's a guaranteed source of income for every kvk without lilith lifting a finger so while i would love to say that they should just remove kvk tech i just don't think that's ever going to happen the only way they would do that is if they replace it with another system that has the opportunity of generating income and that sucks to say but let's face it that's how these games are you know it I know it. Everybody knows it. Let's not pretend like Rise of Kingdoms is on the same playing field as something like League of Legends or Valorant. Those games require more skill and you can't buy any massive advantage. Everything in there is cosmetic, but Rise of Kingdoms is different. Yes, of course, there's some skill involved and you have to learn a lot about different commanders and how mechanics work. But at the end of the day, if you're willing to spend five or six figures on this game, you can be one of the best players in the game. It's just a proven fact. So what's a system that they can implement that can replace KVK tech that isn't as bad? Well, the first thing that I thought of was just making KVK tech permanent, right? If it was just a permanent thing, then even free to play players can invest and work on it over time and eventually they would be able to get to the same point as all of the pay to win whales who would obviously rush that in the beginning but the problem with that is that that's essentially tier six units right and nobody wants that tier five are already way too expensive as it is so to add an entirely new branch of technology into the game would just further the gap between whales and the free to play players because for free to play players and low spenders at least they can choose when they want to invest in kvk tech and they have the option of spending and sometimes the whales maybe won't spend for a kvk or two Whereas if it's a permanent system, then it's always going to be a disadvantage that low spenders are free to play will always have. So I don't think making this a permanent branch in technology is the solution. I actually think it would be pretty detrimental and players would complain about it immediately. And as a matter of fact, I don't actually hate the fact that this is a temporary system. The fact that you have something to do when KVK first opens is exciting. It gives more of a purpose to grinding barbarians. You get the crystals to invest in technology and feeling a reward rewarded for doing so that actually gives you an advantage in battle against real players later in the kvk 
feels good. The problem with the system is like I said before, you cannot finish this system as a free to play player or even as a low spender. I purchased a ton of the pop-up bundles and then eventually I slowed down on playing because we ended up not doing well in KVK at least near the end. But even purchasing those pop-up bundles and being moderately active during the beginning of KVK, there's no way I could have finished this KVK tech all the way to the end. I could have maybe gotten to improve morale five tops and getting improved morale to five only gives me two and a half percent of damage whereas a player who gets all the way to ten has seven and a has three times more advantage over me so if the real problem isn't the fact that it's cyclical it's the fact that you have to constantly be pumping money into the system how can we alter this in a way where Lilith still makes money but it doesn't make players feel like they're at such a disadvantage I think it's time Lilith takes a look at this system and continues to nerf it even further if you guys don't remember KVK tech used to actually give you even more than just 10 percent bonus damage and they eventually went back and changed it and that's when they implemented up to seven troop dispatch limit my suggestion is that lilith should remove improved morale and remove call to arms too that's what i think i think they should just delete those two from this system after marching orders two it should just come up here and split into expanded formations two and special medicines two i personally don't care if a whale has seven marches in the open field sure if there's seven mega powerful marches and i get swarmed down then that sucks but that's also partially my fault for having my single army in a position where it could get swarmed by seven of theirs but i can also see where this would be an advantage to a whale who wants to use all of their commanders that they've been collecting for a long time so i think that this is fine my problem is the fact that those seven marches are going to have 10 percent more damage than me and they're going to be 35 percent larger on top of all the other stuff in here that they have that i'm not going to have and again that's on top of all the other advantages that they're going to have over me anyway i've spent thousands of dollars in this game and i'm not vip 17 yet okay but a mega whale is going to be vip 17 which means they're going to have another five percent bonus damage on me and if they're vip 18 they're going to have an extra 15 percent troop capacity now correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure kvk tech came out before vip 18 18, which actually exacerbates the problem of those giant marches right because now those giant marches are 15 percent larger with vip 18. if lilith just removed those two pieces of research within the kvk tech i think it would actually be in a pretty good place you'd be able to get really far in the kvk tech even if you only purchased the premium season crystal supply for no other reason than because you get 50 percent bonus crystal mine work speed which is really useful especially on day one of kvk because that's going to stack for the rest of the season i think of the difference between participating and doing well in kvk and not is five dollars that's way more reasonable to me than spending hundreds of dollars to get you to that bonus damage but you would still have the option of spending that money if you wanted the seven marches or the reduced healing cost so you could fight even longer now look this is just my opinion right there could be a better way to solve this problem but i think what's most important is that Lilith starts to acknowledge that this is a problem. This is the Google Trends result for both Rise of Kingdoms Lost Crusade, the video game topic, and the generic Rise of Kingdoms search term. This starts at the beginning of 2019 until now. And I gotta say, this is actually better than I thought. We can see here that Rise of Kingdoms peaked during the summer of 2020, which is no surprise. I think lots of video games peaked at this time because of the pandemic. People were just inside and they didn't have anything to do. And so why not download some free games on their phone? And hey, Rise of Kingdoms is actually a pretty good game. So Rise of Kingdoms did really well during the pandemic, which makes sense. And even if we take a look at this most recent summer, Rise of Kingdoms was actually doing pretty well. Of course, it's nothing compared to the peak of 2020, but I don't think it's realistic to assume that it would keep that peak now that the world is opened up a little bit more. I would say overall since peak, the player base has probably been cut in half, which is still a ton of players. It's literally millions and millions of players worldwide, but it shows that Rise of Kingdoms is losing people's interest. In fact, if they didn't release the Vikings in this past summer with a massive marketing push, 
I think the game would be in a much worse position now, but that was six months ago and we haven't seen anything exciting since then. They tried March of the Ages. It was a terrible KVK format and nobody liked it. And since that was scrapped, there's been nothing. The good news is I think that the meta is in a pretty good spot right now. You have multiple rally options. You have multiple garrison options, and this is a unique position that the game has pretty much never been in. So now Lilith is really your last chance to fix this major parasite that's been playing plaguing your game for like a year. People have been dissatisfied with it since it first came out. It's time to do the right thing to literally save your game. This trend, while it's still sustained decently, is in the downward trajectory and you can turn it around by making the game more appealing to more players. Lilith knows this better than anybody. Free to play are the lifeblood of a game. They are like 90% of the entire population that plays Rise of Kingdoms, if not more. Yes, most players, a vast, vast, vast majority of players do not spend money. And honestly, you shouldn't have to spend money to enjoy the game. So Lilith, I hope you're listening. It would be impossible for them to not know that this is a major problem that the player base is not happy with. And really Lilith only has two choices. They can either fix this problem as soon as possible, or they can just sort of generally maintain the game until it dies. And the longer Crystal Tech stays in its current format, the faster that death is going to be. And well, I'm sure they're smart enough to know that the game dying means they don't make any money at all, right? Now, I'm not making this video to cause a storm of hatred that just attacks Lilith on all social medias. No, you guys are pretty much already doing that. It's actually really funny if you take a look at any of their Facebook posts. The top liked comments are always talking about how they should fix the game. No, what I'm suggesting that you guys do if you want to see crystal technology fixed moving forward to make it more appealing to majority of players i want you to click here to give them feedback every single time lilith releases an update click this green button and you should put in the comments that you don't like the state of the game and why put a zero put a one be honest tell them what you think of the game okay put down your feedback and then in this section type why Tell them that you think the crystal technology system is unfair and just click submit every single update until they change it. Because if I'm being real with you guys, this is pretty much the only thing that they're looking at. They don't really care if you comment on their tweets. They're, they don't. I'm sorry. Anyway, if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, hopefully you'll drop a thumbs up on it so the YouTube algorithm recommends it to more Rise of Kingdoms players that we can get on board to do this. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Thank you again to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video and stay tuned because there's going to be more information coming about that championship with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace